sciences and technology and the modern technologies. So the people have shown a lot of interest. That means there is a lot of confidence which has come in the ancient sciences and technologies also. Uh, otherwise, I think a conference with the Vedic sciences and ancient sciences and technologies uh, getting such a great response will not be so easy. I think over this 25 years, out of the lot of research outcomes, what CVIT has gone through and generated enthusiasm in the people and also probably definitely some amount of confidence in the scientists in the country, researchers in the country that we should definitely look into this aspect also very serious. I wish uh, Srivik <coughs> and Sasrigaru to come out with great outcomes, great research outputs and see that the country flourishes in a big way and the vision of Srivik making India a visual will be a reality through this uh, research outcome. Um, I always say that for any country it has to be prosperous and Atman and Dhar are self-reliant. Uh, two things are very, very important. Firstly, the country should be self-sufficient in area of materials. That's one thing first I feel. And second, it has to be having the technologies, the most advanced are innovative technologies in manufacturing. Materials and manufacturing, these two are very, very important for any country. And our country, we are still active to become completely self-reliant in the areas of materials for various reasons. We have worked a lot, we have been working a lot in trying to make many materials 
the country what are required here with our own processes and having production facilities and all that. Even in the area of defense. And today, a lot of things have been developed. The special streams which are required for the maritime operations, the ships, are the very special streams which are required to withstand the very high level of pressures for the submarines have been developed here in the country. And all the ships which are built in the country, all the submarines which are built in the country are using the steels which are developed here in the country and which are being produced by uh, various uh, sail or other, other uh, production facilities in the country. When INS Vikram, the aircraft carrier is built first time in the country indigenously by Kochi Shipyard, almost about 80% of the content of the uh, aircraft carrier is indigenous, indigenous materials in use, primarily because of the materials which are developed here in this country. So that's how we've gone through the process. Uh, lots of various uh, organizations have come in the country, various uh, uh, industries have come here in the country working on various alliances, aluminum alliances and other things and rare earths and all those things also. Particularly in the city of Hyderabad, with uh, various organizations being present here working on that, one being the DMR, Defense Materials Research Laboratory, then Methani, NFTDC, and NFC, and some of the organizations connected to the Department of Automated Energy and Space working in this area, Hyderabad has been one of the centers responsible for developing the materials. But still, with all this, there are lots of gaps. One is the country not having enough natural resources and also the not having developed processes which are very efficient to be competitive in the global market, we are still working on it and struggling on this in a big way. I remember the former Honorable uh, Raksha Mantri, Sri Manohar Parikarji, who himself was a metallurgist from IB. Uh, Mumbai, where Professor Rangopan also has worked. He has been showing a lot of interest in this area. And then in the year 2015, he formed a committee how this country can become self-sufficient, self-reliant in the area of materials, particularly in the strategic materials, with none other than uh, the great material scientist Professor Baldev Raj as chairman and a national committee having people from all organizations who have been working on that and have been formed. The committee worked for almost a year, gone through various things and how the country can progress in this area and none other than Manor Parikriti himself took hours and hours of reviews from this committee and generated a materials policy for this country, how we can go ahead with this. That is going through various changes, what not and all that, and the government is considering it very seriously to take it forward, what to do and all that is one of the uh, important aspects. To um, look at one of the aspects of it is uh, rare earths. Still today, the complete rare related are the permanent magnets, 80% to 90% we import from our, mostly from our northern friend. And today we talk about those today here in the country. And almost all the motors and permanent magnets, what are required in that, we still get from outside. And we are not getting, we are not able to get through the processes whether to process through the sand which is available in the East Coast or various other things to produce the rarest at a lower cost 
than from the outside. In fact, the government has considered very seriously how to uh, crack this. And then in some departments, a policy has come where even if indigenous material is costlier by about 20 percent, go with the indigenous material than with the uh, material which is coming from outside to support the industries here. And that's how multiple industries have come here in the country in uh, various uh, even titanium and other related activities also in the country. Even when we are talking about today, uh, today the world is changing in a big way in the energy sector and the EVs have come in a big way and with most of these energy storage systems whatever we are trying to do, the anodes, cathodes and other things we are still going. This one issue today and second problem in this is also in the materials development today. Right from the thought process or concept today, today what you have to develop the material and go through the whole process and get into the production stage and certify that material. It's anything it takes about between 12 to 15 years of time. There's a long gestation period, what is required in this, which at time makes it difficult uh, for someone to invest that much amount of uh, funding, money and energies and wait for this and what happens after 15 years it comes so. That's why it is limited to primarily this type of a specific special materials limited to only government institutions related to the government funding. But in the last few years, probably for the last decade, there were a lot of sporting activities, lots of organizations, a lot of laboratories of ISRO, Atomic Energy, Living the Cycle, DRU, CSIR institutes which have come up and trying to produce many materials in the country. So at this juncture, when we look at it, a research utilizing our Vedic knowledge, Vedic sciences, where we definitely here, we all at our very top level, not an in-depth amount of study or research like people like Dr. Shasti Garu, but we all know that there are certain well-proven technologies which were there and which people have used on in the way Vedic sciences. One is materials and some of the technologies like techniques like um, cryptology, cryptography related uh, things and all that are very, very much there and very much useful to us. And so the research which Srivit has carried out has come out with various materials, proven materials, proves as a testimony in this area. Over this 25 years, Srivit has worked, we have seen also, with various organizations in the country who have been working in the materials, who need materials, whether it is the office of the PSA, or DIDO, or CSIR, our ISO and atomic energy. Multiple projects have been uh, taken up and the results have come very successfully. In fact, uh, when I look at it, I am not a medical scientist at all. But when you look at it, what is it? So I want, to, let's say, one particular material, uh, let's say 10 micron size, uh, lower than 10 micron size, uh, oval shape, um, nano copper materials or whatever it is or any type of particles what are required. So you define the problem, this is what I require and give it to Shastrigar or whoever it is also and you go through the process and the outcome of that when the materials come, test the material, the materials size, shape and material properties are matching exactly what I have the requirement. That is sufficient for me. And the process should be, if the process is much more efficient than the process what has been followed in the modern science, whether it's the time, or cost, or it's green. If these three are there in that, which are much better than the existing processes and processes which are followed in the other laboratories, that's a boon for us 
that is what his country looks at. Like. So that's how some of the projects in DRU have been uh, uh, given to Srimit, where it is uh, the HGMR laboratory which works on the propulsion system, or the advanced missile laboratories here in Hyderabad, or the stealth related activities which are being carried out uh, at Defense Lab Jodhpur, or some of the naval science laboratories. I am talking about only with respect to the DRDO and uh, what I have seen through during my uh, period at DRDO. So, these are the projects which are being given, which actually, through the processes of ancient science and technology, Shastri Varun has gone through and delivered the end product. Immediate law, uh, we didn't understand also because that is a different way. What you are trying to do here, how you are processing it, you can't expect me to do the same processes and same things and then come out with a uh, material like this is not that. So he has gone through his own processes which are in a completely different level and the material has been supplied, it has been gone through testing and it will be found and few cases of these materials as this is only a prototype produced in laboratory what he has got at a, a, a particular a town like Guto and produced it. So he expects only about a few cases of it and then he also mentioned um, Professor Ramadhaw said you give me 10,000 tons and not my job, that is an industry job, which industry is. You take it and do it. And that's how produced and actually the workers have accepted. So this is where the next step is required. So we have to bring in the industry. We have to bring in industry collaborates with Srivit. And industry definitely should find that it is economically viable for them. It is actually marketing wise and productivity wise, it is viable. And then there is a market available for it. And in, you bring in them, you should be able to produce this in large number. And that is how actually this particular technology gets its own visibility, viability, and also acceptance among the various people in the country is what it is. Let it be one, two, three, four, need not be some tens of materials of it, three, four, five materials out of it, producing with this. And able to come up with the barriers, what we have today, as what I said, whether the extraction processes, we are able to extract. Uh, let's say, as I said, the rare earth is available in a very, very, very small quantity, like what is available in the um, stores of uh, Rajasthan. And we are able to extract it uh, with a process, and the process cost is so low that we are able to compete with China. And that is sufficient for us, and what is required. Or similarly, the East Coast and many other materials. I am just taking the rarest as most popular material which we imported. So I have taken up or talk about any other materials and all that. We are able to produce and industry is able to produce and we are able to get, make the government and make the officers in the government accept that this is a thing where we need to support and then we are going to have bulk orders and then it takes off and it goes. Ahead. That is where I think we need to work out. So. What I request to both Shastri Garu and the research community here is identify the areas, identify the materials and then work on it. Yes, uh, the support is there and we need to work out various mechanisms to convince people that need to get, need to support this type of a technologies in a big way and I am sure that with so many people coming here and then coming out, we should be able to support, get, gather support slowly in a big way and try to see that the technologies are mature. More and more and researchers get involved into it and um, much more infrastructure is created and come out with multiple materials, if not large number, and produce them. And I can definitely see that a lot of academic institutes also now today have shown interest into it and getting into it. And we just heard the Professor Rangopal Rao, the Vice Chancellor of Bits, that the Bits is interested into getting into this and working together and coming out with uh, technologies which are from heritage, um, what are they? And you all, I think, know IIT Hyderabad has got a department. Department of Heritage Sciences. So there is growing interest in the country in this and 
So there will be more researchers coming into this area and coming out with outcomes which can make this country flourish. The requirement is not to protect or come out with um, that our Vedas are great and this, that and all. And I am not saying about it. I, maybe one of the um, uh, need or some people have interest in it and all that. That is good. That is a separate issue. I am looking at use this Vedic sciences, understand that, come out with processes in such a way that we are, this country is able to produce those materials which are required for various applications in the country and we don't have to import. The country becomes self-reliant and country after that we are able to supply to the world with Indian science based um, technologies based materials to the world and making the world green, clean and we are supplying it at a lower cost and which makes the country very prosperous by being self-reliant and also exporting it in a big way. That is what is the outcome which I am looking at and probably definitely the country is looking at. What is the vision of Honorable Prime Minister? Honorable Prime Minister is looking at self-reliant India and mix it hard and make for the world. These are the uh, calls given by the highest office of the country. And so these are for making the country flourish in that. As I said right in the beginning, materials and manufacturing are the most important things in this. And I'm sure uh, with this icon Bharat, we'll be able to bring in Minarchi into the ancient sciences and technology with the modern sciences and you will be able to deliberate in the next two days on this subject by subject in depth and come out with specific outcomes and specific recommendations and we will submit it to the government and try to convince the government to take forward the recommendations of this icon Bharat and see that we will be able to come out with outcomes making the country self oriented in the The best wishes for the conference and my best wishes to Shastri Garu and everyone and best wishes to Srivet Jai Hind Namaskar.